We're going to be looking at one of the darkest companies that still operates and is one that you might be able to go to one of their locations within a few minutes from where you live. It's a company that doesn't seem like it should have anything really fishy or disturbing going on, but whenever you just dig a little bit, you will find so much wrong with this company. Make sure you get cozy and stay tuned because we're going to be talking about a company that doesn't just abuse their customers, they also abuse their animals. I do want to start by saying that if you have a light stomach, you might not want to watch this because it does deal with animal abuse and a lot of other weird, disturbing things that you might not want to hear about. So yeah, I just want to get that out of the way for you. Petland is a company that sells animals. Who knew? Who knew? A place called Petland sells pets. Now, it's important for me to say that because that means that this is a company that sells animals. That is what they do 24-7, so they are eventually going to have issues and run into problems with some of their animals that they're selling. This could be an animal that has a sickness that they don't know how to cure or they didn't catch it in time leading to that animal passing away, or it could be them having a broken bone that develops into a much worse disease that then can kill the animal. The biggest thing here, though, is that if stuff like this is happening and you're having animals pass away, you have to be able to deal with it properly. You can't just leave them locked up in a freezer in the back of your store and act like it doesn't exist. But that is exactly what Petland does. Now, you might ask yourself, what are they supposed to do? It's, it's a dead animal. What are they going to do with it? It costs $30. All right, I'm going to butt in here and tell you Shelby was just a little bit wrong here. Uh, for small animals, it can be $30, but for larger animals like a dog, it could be $100 to $250. It just depends on the size since it's a puppy. It's probably around 100, but still, for a company that sells puppies every day, they should be ready for something like this. To go and cremate a dead animal. Take it immediately. They are dead already. There is no point in locking them in a freezer with the rest of the food that the animals are supposed to be eating. It just shows the gross negligence that is going on at some of these stores. But the puppy in the freezer isn't even the worst part here. The part is how the puppy died. The puppy didn't just pass away from some unknown illness or disease that they didn't catch in time. The puppy was put into an overcrowded area with other dogs that were sick because he wasn't selling on the showroom floor. I don't think it takes even a brain to understand what's going to happen there. But that is what Petland did, leading to this animal passing away, leading to them putting it in a freezer instead of doing anything else with it. Petland claims that all of their animals are like visited by vets three times before they're sold and that is clearly not the case or else you would never have an animal with a broken bone going to a customer. And even worse is whenever the actual employees of that store aren't even allowed to tell the customers that that puppy that they are looking at and playing with has a broken bone. And yes, this is something that happened. I'm not making something up to like make a hit video on a company. I'm just talking about a company that is absolutely atrocious and should not be in business anymore. And this isn't just an issue that's gone away. It is an issue that even though these have happened years ago, they are still happening consistently to this day. You can still find people who buy these puppies and then they get sick in a week and then die. And that's going to lead us to the worst story that I have ever seen come out of Petland. And it all starts with a sweet old lady named Everett. Now, Everett already had one dog named Apple, which is an adorable name for a dog. She had already lost her husband, and in her own words, all she had left was the TV and her dogs. So Everett decided that she wanted another companion alongside Apple, and went online and found a cute Maltese puppy from Petland. And she paid for this puppy using a Petland credit card. Whenever she got home, she noticed that something was wrong, and in her own words said that the puppy wasn't acting like a normal dog should. Within two weeks of adopting this puppy, whenever she went to pick it up, it was limp, and in her own words, it felt like she was picking up a teddy bear. At the vet's office, they immediately determined that the dog had a hereditary disease. This is something that if they actually had a vet look at the dog before it was sold, they would have determined this immediately. It was very quick that she adopted the dog and immediately noticed something wrong with it. Looked at the dog at all, they probably would have caught this disease with the vet there. Everett kept receiving reminders from Petland that she needed to pay her credit card, but she didn't think it was fair that she would have to be paying for an animal that is no longer with her. So she went back and what do you think Petland would do if a dog that you bought has a hereditary disease? Do you think A, you would get your money back, B, they'd give you a new dog, C, they'd do absolutely nothing, or D, I don't fucking know, one of the other ones. Ding, ding, ding. That's right. You get a new dog. Petland is one of the places that sells animals, so they should know that whenever you buy something like a dog, you get an emotional attachment to it. It's not something that you can just replace immediately whenever one of them passes away, especially whenever you guys failed to notice a very important issue with that dog. But don't worry, we're not even at the worst part of the story yet. 
Whenever someone was interviewing this pet land that sold Everett this puppy, the manager essentially said that it was her fault. Now his wording didn't specifically mention her. The manager said that if a customer wants their vet bills to be covered, that all they have to do is come back and ask them to cover them. Oh yeah, also on top of this, that vet visit has to be within four days. Whenever you buy a brand new animal, spending thousands of dollars on it, why do you think that the customer should have to immediately take them to a vet? Whenever you adopt a puppy from a shelter or someone that just can't afford to keep their animal, yes, you want to take them to a vet. But whenever you spend $3,000 on a puppy that is supposed to have multiple vet visits before they're even available, you shouldn't have to worry about taking them to a vet immediately. Now, Maltese puppies typically range from $600 to $2,000 for purebreds, and Everett here was paying $3,000. Now, nothing against Everett. That, that's perfectly fine. You're overpaying for an animal because you're getting it from a place where you can, you can get it right away. You don't have to wait or, on anything like that. You have a bit of a convenience cost when it comes to pet land. You get it right away, and you don't have to worry about like meeting up with a breeder who may not have 24-7 availability to sell you a puppy. So I understand that pet land is going to charge a bit more for their animals. But whenever you do this, you need to make sure that your animals are in perfect condition because you are selling an overpriced animal. And to some people, these animals are passing away within weeks of getting them. So just completely avoid getting an animal from Petland. I always recommend adopting from a shelter, but some people aren't going to be able to do that. Even we weren't able to do that because the shelter out here didn't have any animals that were allowed under our HOA contract. So we had to actually go with a breeder. But the most important thing whenever you have to go with a breeder is that you want to make sure that they are treating their animals properly and respectfully. Go to their location and see how their animals are kept up and see how they're actually cared about, trained, if they have plenty of room to run around, if any of them look abused. And if you see any of those signs, make sure you leave immediately and report them to the Humane Society. But that's it for the video. And if you did enjoy this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button for more content. And I will see you guys in my next video. Peace out.